start recording. Okay, good. Hello, and uh, we are the 36th District Democrats, and today we are interviewing John Lisbon, who is running for Seattle City Council District 6. John, uh, over to you. Thank you. Um, let me see, I'm trying to get the screen so I can see everybody correctly. Oops, didn't want to do that. All right. Um, hi, everybody. I'm John Lisbon. I'm running for District 6 for a third time. Um, third time's charm, as they say. I'm a 25-year um, Ballard resident. I'm married to a beautiful uh, Japanese woman who I met here, and she's from Kyoto, um, native born, and I have a beautiful mixed race son who is going to Western Washington now after some struggles with COVID and he's doing just fine, thank you. Uh, my background is I, I actually started in radio. I had a 10 year radio career and after 10 years of starting and realizing that I'm not gonna be Howard Stern, I decided to uh, take advantage of my education. I had an MBA, um, which I had finished right out of school and I started in business actually as a in digital in marketing marketing career in florida and after a while i learned that you know what there's other things out there i was looking for other jobs the dot-com era had started and i found a job in good old seattle and at the time seattle I read a newsweek article that said it was the most livable city in the country. So I figured, okay, why not? I'll go all the way across the country to Seattle. And I've, I've just fell in love with that. And that's where I met my, my wife and built my family. And then the dot-com bomb happened. And I just, uh, my wife and I both lost our jobs. We had our backs to the wall. So I started um, a business. And that's what I've been running for 15 years. It's called, it was called Pointed, and I called that about four years ago. I guess that's the time for my intro. Thank you. Uh, the first question that we have is what steps will you take to ensure that the city remains safe for all, including Black, Indigenous, and LGBTQ people, while keeping police accountable to elected leadership and community? Thank you for that question. I, I think, as I mentioned, I wasn't, um, I didn't see these questions before I started, but I don't have a well-prepared answer to that. I do though have that question. I do though have um, ideas and thoughts about the um, police department, which, and safety issues, but primarily with the police, because I did run as I mentioned four years ago. And at the time, I was strongly in favor of not reducing uh, the police budget by 50%. Um, I felt that was just not gonna be good for um, our police force and for the culture. And as a business person, having run a business and building a business that was successful only because it had a great culture. Not only, but primarily, that's what we did because we had to compete against Microsoft and all the major companies here, Amazon, for, um, for employees. We had to offer something different and that was a good culture. And I think that's really important for uh, the Seattle Police Department. And I think it's really important that the city council has their back. I know there are issues and yes, there are issues. I think the consent degree is, will be ending pretty soon, but um, I think it's really important for safety of all those communities that we have a police department that is working on our side, that has a good culture, who comes out to the community and is very community minded. And that is something I've, I've learned from my travels. 
Thank you. Thanks. Uh, our second question is, how would you ensure the city has an updated climate action plan? And what specific actions would you prioritize to get us back on track to meeting Seattle's Green New Deal goals? Wow, that's a great question. <clears throat> As you know, that's, uh, well, you don't know, but that's primarily why I decided to run. I wasn't thinking of running, but um, when I heard the land use committee and what how they had voted on the recent tree ordinance, I read a newsletter from um, one of my friends, Alex Peterson, and I was actually astonished. The fact that Seattle, you know, has a goal of reaching thirty percent canopy tree canopy, and then the um, land use committee decided to not take any of the amendments that were that were proposed by the urban forest commission it just left me dumbfounded because we have one technology right now that we can deploy for climate change and that's the lowly tree and if we give a, give that away to development interests I, I was just dumbfounded, and then I got a call from somebody from Tree Pack and on the board, and asked me to run because I wasn't thinking of doing it. But that's that's really what prompted me. So as it comes to climate change, there are so many things we can do. Of course, reducing traffic and reducing carbon emissions in so many different ways. Using electricity, we have such a beautiful mix of electricity here in Washington. We're so lucky. And um, and we have to promote all all other technologies, but the one technology we really cannot afford not to um, not to promote is trees. And I would like to get something going, not just maybe city led, but uh, community led as well. Thank you. Sorry, I'm kind of talking to myself and I'd like to see you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm reading this one, but I had to find it here. The move levy is set to expire uh, at the end of 2024. The next nine year transportation levy will go before the voters in November, 2024 to begin in 2025. What investments and improvements would you prioritize for the next transportation levy? Well, um, for sure, when it comes to transportation, and I don't think I'm different than anybody else on this, we need um, we need to electrify public transportation, our buses and our um, cars and everything else. So um, those that's probably the first thing that is really important for our environment. It's getting hotter, as you might have noticed. And um, we have to do whatever we can citywide to improve transportation. The bus system, if we can get it electrified, will um, is a big help. I lived on I live on 32nd Avenue, and maybe I shouldn't say that. Sorry, <laughs> but I live on 32nd Avenue, and we have the bus system going right down our block, and for years. I've experienced a lot of pollution. Um, our front, the front of our house was permeated with black stuff. And, um, and so we have to get the transportation system clean. We have to also build, especially around um, high-speed transit and around light rail and our investments in light rail, that's really important. I know there's some concern with um, pollution and having a lot of people living around light rail, but, um, or living around like Aurora Avenue, but there are ways to mitigate that, which I've just learned about. So I, I think it's really important that we invest in um, uh, you know, you, you, utilizing our electric grid and our clean electric grid in any way possible. How much time do I have on this one? I'm sorry. I thought, okay. 
My, my my apologies. I actually started the timer late on that one, <laughs> but um, okay, so I, I was okay. yeah. Given I didn't start it in time, I <laughs> gone until you stopped. <laughs> oh. okay, okay, I'll take. I'll do the last. <laughs> one. Thank you, Jenny. The city has been in a homelessness state of emergency since 2015. Yet our homelessness crisis has not receded. What are we doing wrong, and what steps will you take to address the crisis? Yes, I haven't heard that question before. It's, you know, right now that crisis is exacerbated by the fentanyl crisis and 1% of our population is homeless and about 20% of our deaths are now in King County anyway are, are due to fentanyl. It, it it's It's a crisis that's, you know, throughout the country, especially on the West Coast. And there are a lot of things that the city of Seattle itself can't do as this is an issue that started with the, um, or was made a lot worse by the war on drugs. Because when people are going to jail, they end up often on the street. And they have about a 16 times more higher chance of becoming homeless. So one thing that is very important nationally is to end the um, jail homeless cycle so we can uh, reduce the amount of homelessness in this country. It, it's a wicked problem and that's why it hasn't been solved. What I have learned and I have researched is what has worked, and that's permanent supportive housing. It's worked, for instance, in Houston, it's the only thing that has ever been proven to stop homelessness. So that's the North Star here. That's what we have to be working towards is permanent supportive housing. What happened in Houston and why it was so effective is because they had a consultant come in from HUD to help them, everybody get on the same page. And that's, that's something we're gonna have to do here in Seattle. Thank you. Um, sorry, okay, so now now we will go into our, um, our um, follow-up questions. Sorry, I'm trying to do three three things right now at once. Um, so so yeah, um, so these will be one minute answers and um, I will open it up, uh, I guess, to whoever has a hand up in the room to, to ask a question. If not, I have one, but I'll see if anyone else does first. Okay, I'll, I'll start. Yeah, okay. I'll I just want to say thank you for everybody yeah. for being here on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> um, I realize this is tough that you 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 filed on Friday, so this all this is all very quickly. Okay. Um, no, what what I was going to ask you had mentioned um, when uh, when you were talking about um, ways to mitigate pollution um, uh, for people living on busy arterials. Can you go a little bit into what some of your ideas were there? wasn't so much my idea, but I heard from a developer who built near a busy arterial recently that they had air intakes coming in from the roof instead of on the side of the house. And so they can get uh, air that is cleaner, less polluted. So that was um, because I, I know back to council members ago, um, that was an issue that Mike O'Brien, you know, he, he, you know, rightfully didn't want to build there because of the potential impact on children with pollution. And I think there are now um, technologies that will make it, well, it's not even much of a technology, but developers know how to filter the air better. Any other um, any other uh, questions from other people in the room? 
I see three, three hands. hands. Ooh, I see three other hands. Uh, wait, who? Oh, sorry, I'm not, not seeing any hands. Oh, okay. Uh, my my apologies. I was looking at the wrong place. Uh, Toby. Do you support inclusionary housing that requires developers to include low-income housing when up zones occur? And if so, how will you make that happen? Uh, absolutely not. No. Of course I do, yes. Um, <laughs> well, the the issue with that is mostly how MHA and the Mandatory Housing Affordability Program eventually got uh, passed. And it was passed despite a group called SCALE that had sued the city because they wanted it. Uh, they wanted to either to improve NHA or make it fair. And they their goal and the city's goal at the time was that 50% of the housing um, that was built from mandatory housing affordability would be um, a lot of time. 50% would be inclusionary. It's been nowhere near that, and that's why we have to improve MHA on the city council. Um, Amanda. Yeah, um, having having run uh, product and technology teams competing with uh, Microsoft and Amazon, I appreciated your comment on culture being a competitive value and how you would approach that. However, as a city councilor, how what specifically would you do uh, in terms of culture from the police perspective um, to encourage that or improve that? I think I could consult <laughs> with the, with the um, leadership of, of the police department. It, it's just a vision of how it would work and how it could be better because again, um, I've experienced that. I've seen what the city council has done that has been um, antithesis to, to a good culture, it has ruined the culture in the police department. So as, as a police, as a city council member, I would be supporting, um, you know, fully funding the police department. I mean, they've already been funded it's not a matter of funding. It's a matter of hiring and retention. Okay, I think that's, oh, sorry. I read the ding wrong. Yeah. So I thought I was done, sorry. Okay, uh, Shep. Um, do you have any thoughts about how to improve uh, the east-west uh, public transit in the city. Um, we have pretty good north-south, but getting yeah. west is terrible. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if you noticed, but the, the streets here in Seattle and Ballard and all around are pretty thin. So yeah, I've always thought that we need more micro buses and smaller buses to get around so we can have more transportation. and. For instance, it's it's actually the buses, the size of the buses right now are are not helping. They're blocking traffic and they're slowing down traffic because you can't get by them on a two-way street. So I think that's that's one simple idea that I think would help the east-west traffic situation. I live as far west as possible. So I know what you're talking about. To get to I-5 is not, not a lot of fun. Thank you, Chef. Sorry, I think we have time for one more question. Um, if I'm reading this right. Uh, do we yeah, do we have any um, anybody else who would like to ask one? Um, if not, which I don't see anybody with one. Uh, would you just like to give like a one minute uh, closing? Sure. Uh, thanks for spending the time again with me. Uh, this is all part of the democratic process and you guys are all part of it. And really, 
I appreciate that. The reason I'm running is because um, I'm passionate about Seattle. I moved here again 25 years ago. It was the most livable city. And I, I have a vision of Seattle where it not only can be livable, but it can be a world-class city. We do things right. We can do it. I've seen in the time I've moved here a lot of degradation. We have severe challenges. And I think the root of those challenges is the rapid growth. Seattle needs a good manager, somebody who is, knows how to do budgets and knows how to manage budgets who can eke out efficiencies. I think I'm that guy for you. If you decide if you want the status quo, then you can keep the status quo. But otherwise, I'd like to see you in city council. Yeah, um, thank, thank you for your time. So that uh, concludes the formal part of our interview. I